Hello everyone and welcome to part one in a series that will learn you Objective C from the start and up. Now, I will assume that you have no experience with programming whatsoever. Um, I also assume that you want to program for iOS devices um, because Objective C is used mainly to program for iOS devices like the iPhone, the iPad um, and the iPod. Um, I'm also going to assume that you're up for a challenge because I assume that this is your first programming language and by that assumption that means that it will actually be a, a little hard because the first language is always the toughest one. You need to get in the way of thinking um, and, and the way of seeing code that a programmer needs to. You need to be able to solve problems in a programming fashion. but. It will all come eventually when you've done enough exercising, but it's not something that you learn in, in a day or a week. It takes time and you need to be able to give yourself whatever time you need as a person in order to grasp this programming language and the whole programming concept in general. Now, what is Objective-C? Well, Objective-C is something called an OOP language. Now, OOP stands for Object Oriented Programming Language. And that means that we will be dealing with a lot of something called objects, and we'll get into that later in the series. Objective-C, as mentioned, is mostly used in the iOS, and the iPad and the iPhone. And Objective-C is what you use to make all these applications you see on the, uh, on the iPhone and the iPad that you can download in the App Store. All these apps are made using Objective-C and I've also written that Objective-C is easy to extend and that means that when you've learned one programming language it's much easier to learn a new one because then it's all pretty much just new syntaxes and new way of writing stuff but the essence of it all is the same and also please note that it's called Objective-C and you might have heard of a language called C and Objective-C is what we call a superset of the program language C which means that it took the C programming language and then it added on um, a lot of stuff for instance the, um, the objects oriented uh, programming parts and then they named this language which is built upon C, Objective-C now, why should you choose to learn from this series that I'm making instead of all these other books and all these other series that are out there? Um, well, first of all, obviously, you will learn from videos. And a lot of people, they like to learn from them by watching videos contra reading books because um, they, fe they feel that they can watch one part of a video well, contra to reading a chapter, they find that reading, uh, or sorry, that watching that one episode is better suited for them because when they read a book, all the words will just, well, they will re read the words, but they won't understand them. And I'm sure you've all had that feeling that you've read five pages and then you realize that all you've been thinking about is what you're going to have for dinner. And then all those five pages, they are, well, you might as well not read them because you just read the words, you didn't understand it. And a lot of people, they understand more from watching videos. And also I'll be providing exercises at the end of each video series. So that when you're done watching a series, I'll give you some exercises that you can practice whatever we learned in this particular video. And that really reinforces what you've learned a lot, so I recommend doing as much as possible of those exercises. And you can also get personal help from me on my forum. I have a forum and the link will be in the description of each single video. And you can go in there and you can ask all sorts of questions. Well, be it um, how you should watch the videos or any tips you need or some particular programming problem that you need to um, have worked out or some concepts in, in a particular video that you just didn't understand and you needed to explain in another way. So that's how I think that this can really be suited for the 
extreme beginners because you might watch a video and you don't understand exactly what's going on and then you can go on the forum and you can ask and I'll elaborate or make some other examples and then it might click for you. So I really recommend going to that forum with whatever questions you have and um, also if you can't do an exercise then go on to my forum, ask for help. And again, I want you to learn. That's why I'm making this. I really want people to learn because I think programming is, is a wonderful thing and everyone should be able to learn it if they so wish. And there's a lot of resources and great resources for learning um, programming out there on the market. I myself learned from a ton of different books and forums and a few videos. And I just realized I want to be part of that community that brings programming in um, a beginner's way or in a teacher's way and help people learn programming. And how to watch and learn? Um, well, basically, you have to watch from start to finish. Finish the whole video before you go and pause and answer your phone or go outside. Sit down and take at least the time that the next video in the series take and watch it and follow along on what's happening. And you should ask questions if you ever think what if or how or can you or any questions related to anything in the video, ask them, write them down on a piece of paper while watching the video. And then when the video is done, do the exercises and if you can't solve some exercises, write those down on a piece of paper as well. Then when you're done, go into my forum and throw it all in there. And uh, watch the video in one go, well that's from start to finish again. Um, and you should try to do a little each day. Um, for instance, watch one video each day or do an extra exercise or well, do something programming related each day, well, just a little bit, it doesn't have to be much, but if you set yourself a goal to do it each day, then each day you have to sit down and do something programming related, and that will speed up your learning, because if you don't, you might have these one, two or three weeks where you don't do anything. Um, and obviously I also want you to learn as fast as possible while making you feel comfortable, and that's why making a little each, each day actually means a lot over a few months. And that's basically it. Now that we got all the formalities out of the way, um, we can dive right into it. And this first part here is going to be getting um, us a little familiar with Xcode. Now, Xcode is this program down here. It has a hammer and a blue, a blueprint background thingy. Um, you can download it from the App Store, it's absolutely free. You just have to sign up as a developer in order to use it and there's a great guide on Apple's forum how to do that. So just go into Apple's website um, or Google Apple Developer and get into the program. Now you should note that there are two types of developers. There's the paid and free. The free one is sufficient enough for this series but you want to get the paid one if you want to test on your own devices. Um, but if you use the free one, you have access to something called the simulator, and we're actually just going to spend most of our time in the console, so taking the free is absolutely sufficient, and then you can just operate when you're ready to make real apps. But when you've got this program downloaded, you just open it, and then you're presented with this here. Um, over here you have the recent projects you've made and yours should be empty right now if you haven't done anything and what you want to do is create a new project then this pops up uh, there's a lot of different templates for your new project um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the OS X section and press application and then we're going to be using the command line tool and this is actually what we're going to be using pretty much the entire time because working with the console is what enables us to get a firm grasp of the programming language before we start working with an interface. So select the command line tool, press next, 
product name and this is the name of your project and um, and for this particular project we're just going to call it xcode uh, discovery and um, the organization name minus jbj programming you can have it be whatever you want and the company identifier is a backwards um, a backwards homepage string so for instance com.jbj or whatever you can have it be anything you'd like but I recommend having the same one for each single project type set that to foundation if it isn't already and use automatic reference counting should always be checked these are the default settings of our project so make sure that the foundation and use automatic reference counting are both present. Then press next and you're given the option to place your project where you want and then create it. Now this pops up. Let's just make this big. Okay, if we look to the left here, this is our file system. This is, these are all the files in our project. If you press this little arrow here next to your project, you can see that it encapsulates everything, so it acts like a folder. And if we expand this, we get all the files in our project. Then we have um, a folder called Xcode Discovery. This folder consists of all our files that this project consists of. And by files, I mean programming files um, or whatever we add to it. There's also something called supporting files and frameworks and products. You don't have to worry about these. We have this file called the main.m file. Now, this file will be whoops, will be there every single time we create a new project, and it will be filled with some comments and a bunch of code down here. Don't worry about this yet. All we want to do in this video is just get familiar with Xcode the program we're going to be working in and then in the next part we're going to be some, writing some real code so this was the file system or the file management system and these are where all our files will be located and you can organize them into different folders but um, we won't get into that right now um, if we go up here you can see that currently we have this folder selected but we can also select a bunch of different stuff don't worry about these yet but if you can't see this file system it's probably because you have one of these selected so make sure you have this folder selected and what's more interesting is these segmented controls over here there's something called the editor and if we press this editor this tuxedo suit you can see that we get this split thingy um, and if we press this one we get another um, view if we press this one we just get what I like to call the standard one and this is the one we're going to be using but I recommend that you just play around with these a little and these over here as well the view you can see that we just hit the file over there and we can show a little bar down here, we can hide this bar over here play around with these a little just to make sure that you know roughly what they are doing you don't have to understand it, you just need to know that they are there and they can be used and if there's some particular part of the screen you can't see that's probably because you need to um, to press one of these buttons up here and we don't have to worry about anything else right now to be honest. This program, Xcode, is actually a wonderful program. It's called an integrated development environment and it's where you're going to be spending most of your time if you're going to be working with Apple's iOS devices. And Xcode receives updates frequently and I recommend that you get the latest version of Xcode every single time it's there. Um, and it will be available through the App Store um, and you can update it like any other application. Um, and if you're watching this series and you realize that your version is actually a new version than one 
being used in the series here. Um, go into my forum and, and ask if there's anything you need to know or well basically I just recommend just keep going and if you stumble upon something that I do that you can't do then it's probably version related and you should go to my forum and ask it but Xcode rarely makes any changes that are relevant when learning the language. And with those words, I think that um, this was it. So for exercises today, I really don't have any. I just wrote, you have to get decently comfortable with Xcode. And by that, I mean you go in and do exactly what I did. You look at the files, you hide and expand folders, you show different menus of Xcode, you just play around a little until you get comfortable with Xcode and you roughly know how it behaves. And then in the next part, we're gonna get into some real code. This video was just to get some formalities out of the way and I know it seem, might seem a little boring, but I promise you we're gonna get to the fun part, which is writing actual code in the next part. So let me know what you guys think and I hope I see you in the next part.